Good morning, folks. Plasma filaments learning to skip an arcade through the corona. We've got lightning, meteors, Greenland, and exoplanets to hit today, but first, let's start with the sun over at spaceweathernews.com, and there's the last 24 hours on our star. Bright active region and a few dark coronal holes stealing one's attention. Please also notice the larger umbral field loops on the left side from another sunspot group making its way around. Thus far, the active region has not produced any solar flaring activity to speak of, and the reason is because it lacks complex sunspots. It almost lacks sunspots altogether, as we're eyeing just one minute umbral core there this morning, and no penumbral shroud. Earth is magnetically connected to these coronal holes, but thus far they have been modestly powerful, and so we expect their solar wind to be the same. Due here at Earth tomorrow night or Saturday, solar wind over the last three days has slightly gotten faster but still not even out of calm range. The slight intensification, however, is why the KP is up off the floor. Let's go to the satellites where long wave radiation is going to be followed up by day-night cloud phase shifts as the sunset energy change really allowed that signature explosion of storms as the sky fell dark. I didn't have the best shots of lightning, they were mostly hiding within the hail and rain there, but a few times it did pop out and say hello, I was waiting for her. We weren't seeing the step leaders or return strikes, only the in-cloud discharges there. Lots of rain though. At 3.33 a.m. I walked outside and saw four meteors in three minutes. It must be early August and the Perseids preparing to put on their yearly show. This is Meteorshowers.org here, showing the breadth of the material responsible for this shower. Just know that for more than a week here, the show is going to get better and better in the night sky. Try to get out and see it. Up next, we've got news out of Cambridge on numerous exoplanet chemistries and their chances for primordial soup as far as we can tell. Top right of this chart, you see just one planet super close to Earth, although Mark's hitting at least two colors will be darn close as well. Now, despite its nearly identical chemistry to Earth, its 380-day year and same orbital distance from its sun-like star, the big problem with this one is that it's five times as massive as Earth and nobody alive could even take a step there without collapsing. Luckily, we live here, or maybe not so lucky if you haven't had your head under a rock the last decade. Scientists have now used both gravity maps and ground magnetic maps to reveal geothermal heat flux below the kilometers of ice and snow piled on top of Greenland. They also explain how it came to be, along with Iceland, after Greenland's geographic shift allegedly millions of years ago. Website members, you have your August planetary geometry posted in the Deeper Look section. Got about six days until things start to get fun. Contest winners were drawn last night, and I will send out those emails today. We've got wind maps and shots of our star to close. We greatly appreciate your support, and we'll do this all again tomorrow, right here. But right now, it's 4.35 a.m. in the new valley of the sun. Eyes open, no fear. Be safe, everyone.